I'm going to read to you a paper I just writ. It's called Onan and Independency. Independence from the dependent is the central tenant in the masculinity in which I was raised up. Complete independence from others that are completely reliant on me for their wants and their needs, which is the definition of social power. Which is why, as masculinity ceases to be a requirement and becomes an option for men, it should become an option for women. It is to both men and women I will now speak. Independence is self-reliance. Reliance on yourself for all your wants and needs. Which brings us to Onanism or masturbatory practice. Onanism is sexual self-reliance and that is, as far as I'm concerned, the argument for masturbatory practice. Masturbation is self-reliance. But recently, Recently, I realized that there was a problem with my onanistic practice. It was sustained by imagery of other women, which admits of a dependence. But then it occurred to me that self Dependence already has the implication of a multiplicity of selves. The relationships between your selves constitute reliance on yourself. So, why not fuck an image of yourself? Thinking that, I found myself wanting to be gay for the first time in my life. Because homosexuality would mean masculinity, if homosexuality means complete independence. But my own heterosexuality would seem to make complete independence, complete masculinity, impossible. But as I was already thinking along the lines of a multiplicity of selves, I thought of my feminine side, my inner woman, my anima. I could fantasize about fucking my anima. Notice that this is already the second subversion of the peripheral tenets of received masculinity affected by the logic of the central tenet, independence. 
masculinity's contradictions are tearing itself apart. The logic of independence concludes either homosexuality or reliance on your inner woman is the requirement of a higher masculinity. Complete independence. My anima is shorter than me. She has long legs, long waist, torso, neck and face. She has long and delicate hands and feet. She's lean and small breasted. She's fair with large hazel eyes, pale lips, soft cheeks, long curly hair in ringlets. In her are reposed all my feminine characteristics. Behavior. My physical grace. My vanity. My empathy. My gossip. My concern for things that are cute and things that are baby. My interest in interior design and event planning. <laughs> my conversation. My emotionality. My dependency. Even for this, it is important to know your anima as a complete person, as you have to be able to imagine her authentic reactions in all conceivable scenarios in a lifelong sexual relationship. As for the sex, from a perspective where your anima is a separate person, you would be your animus. That person who would remain when your anima is separated, your purely masculine side. Now, if you're a man, even when you're fucking another person, you are not your animus. You are fucking as your animus, tempered by your anima. The animus is untempered, pure masculine. As the anima is a pure femininity unrealized even by women. As you embrace yourself, your animus and anima become the embrasure of ying and yang. The completed, independent individual becomes the unity.